Welcome to Dark Knight Films Reviews and another Hammer Productions Night. Tonight, I will be reviewing The Vengeance of She, released in 1968. Vengeance of She stars John Richardson, Olenka Barova, Edward Judd, Colin Blakely, Jill Melford, George Sewell, Andre Morrell, Noel Willman, and Derek Godfrey. The Vengeance of She was directed by Cliff Owen. Now this one was written by Peter O'Donnell. And as I said in my She review, um, back when I was a kid, this one was the one that I preferred over the original She. I thought She was boring as shit, and I thought this one was an exciting improvement of a film. But upon rewatching this film, just like rewatching She, um, I realized that uh, uh, this film's a mess, unfortunately. Now, this film brings back John Richardson and Andre Morel. Um, John Richardson is playing. Callicrates. Yeah, he's no longer Leo. He has fully embraced his reincarnated persona. Um, and meanwhile, Andre Morel plays a completely different character of Kasim in this film. And no other returning actors from the previous film return in this. Um, Ursula Andrus has been replaced with uh, Olenka Barova, and uh, she, she looks the part. She looks like Ursula Andrus in the face a lot, um, playing this character of Carol. Basically, this film basically kind of does a uh, role reversal and flips um, John Richardson with the Aisha character, and so we have this girl, Carol, who Callicrates has been convinced is the reincarnation of Aisha. Um, and who is he been convinced by? Uh, a character played by Derek Godfrey named uh, Minahari. And... This character is a great character in this. I mean, he is sinister. He's well played by Derek Gottfried. Um, and I wish the rest of the film was as good as this guy's performance and the way he is in this. Because John Richardson might as well have not even came back for this because his character is got about as much screen time as, well, probably even less, um, as what Ursula Andrus had in the original She. Um, and yet he is top billed in this thing as the star of this film. And he doesn't even look anything like um, the way he looked when he played Leo um, in the first film. And this was only like uh, four years later. And this film has a bad uh, way of introducing characters. I mean, they introduced the main character of Edward Judd's Philip and Malenka's Carol. They introduced them alongside characters like Colin Blakely's George, Jill Melford's Sheila, and George Sewell's Harry. And alongside them, you have uh, Andre Morel's Kasim, um, who basically has, well, his only connection is to Olenka's Carol. He has no other interactions with any of the other cast members in this, um, unfortunately. Um, Edward Judd's Philip is a friend of uh, 
this rich uh, tycoon character named George, played by Colin Blakely. And uh, he's really close friends, I guess, with uh, George and his wife, Sheila. And the captain of his vessel that he likes to uh, joyride in um, is the Harry character, played by George Sewell. And these characters are introduced, and then George is systematically just dropped from the, from the film because they have his character have a heart attack and die. And Sheila is just kept around for one extra scene where she's grieving, and then she's gone. And then it looks like they're going to shift to Harry being a major character in this as he agrees to help Philip to find Carol, who has wandered away. Um, only to have him systematically get killed by a character that has no reverence to this plot at all. And then Carol meets Kasim, um, Andre Morel's character, and then same thing happens to him. He's systematically killed off. Before he even has a chance to interact with Edward Judd's Philip. It is really badly put. Whereas, you know, she introduced you to your three main characters you're going to be following on this adventure, and they were your bridge to following the story. This has none of that. This introduces characters, kills them off, and then other characters, such as Sheila, unfortunately, just despair have nothing else to do with the film. If you're there not killed, they just disappear from the film. And that's unfortunate because, like I said, uh, Derek Godfrey uh, Minahari is doing a really sinister, great performance in this. Now, originally, when Ursula Andress was turning down this role in this, they were considering Susan Denberg for the role of Carol, which I would have loved that because um, I loved her performance in Frankenstein Created a Woman, and I think it would have been a really good role, and she would have brought a lot more personality to this role, even though this character is not written very well and isn't given much personality to be able to pull off in your acting, but Alenka Barova is just, she is not an actress. You can tell she's just like some sort of a model or some shit, and she just is not a very good actress in this. Um, and like I said, the script does not give her much as far as, you know, all she's doing in this script is basically running around as a zombie, basically, because uh, Minahari is uh, using his uh, magic to try and lure her to come to him um, so that she can be with Callicrates. Um, and of course, he is uh, only doing that because he wants eternal life. Um, and that is what Callicrates has promised him. Um, if he brings back Aisha to him. So he has formed this scheme to, you know, lie to Callicrates about Carol being the reincarnation of Aisha, um, which, like I said, it would have been worked much better with uh, Susan Denberg in there because she doesn't look like Ursula Andress, so it would have made sense that, um, you know, but, but they went and tried to get this model that looks 
a lot like Ursula in the face. And it's like, why? If she can't act, why do that? Edward Judd is a fairly good actor in here as Philip. Um, and a lot of these, I really liked their performances. Like I said, I liked, I liked Cullen Blakely's George. I liked uh, Jill Milford's Sheila. I liked, I even liked uh, George Sewell's Harry. And of course I liked Andre Morel's Cassine. But these characters are just cannon fodder. They just bring them in, introduce them, make it look like they're going to be central to the plot, and then they either kill them off or they just, in Sheila's case, disappear. Um, so yeah, it it is a jumbled mess and uh and John Richardson's um Calicrates is made to look even worse than what he looked in the first film and I said he was pretty weak but he was at least written strong in certain points this thing he is basically letting himself be manipulated and being um used by Minahari, and it just makes him look even weaker than what they did. In the, and here he doesn't have anything strong. His strongest point in this film is near the end when Philip convinces him finally that Minahari is only using him. And then he finally grows, you know, some testicles and actually tries to do something. But And then, of course, they had to reuse the same ending and have uh, Callicrates walk into the flames and age the way that uh, they did with Aisha in the first film. And it's like, more of this is basically almost like a remake of She than it is a sequel. Not only is that apparent in the story, but it is also apparent in the way that Carol's little flashback scene uh, showing uh, what happened to make um, John Richardson become Calicrates, which is completely reshot because the first film was by MGM and this one was distributed through 20th Century Fox. <laughs> so they're not shooting on the same sets. They are trying to design it to look like what we saw in She, but it is so much cheaper from what you can see in um, Vengeance of She when they're doing these little so-called flashbacks um, than how big and grand scale it was in She. So my review of Vengeance of She I am going to give this film a 6.8 out of 10. Um, <laughs> if it would have been the kid me rating this, I probably would have given it like a 9 or something. But no, um, I have matured in my films. So, I mean, no more kid bullshit where, hey, this is an action film. This is a great, fun film. This is awesome. Um, no, no. Um, so that's unfortunate, uh, cause, uh, director Cliff Owen tries his best to do what he can with the shoddy script by, uh, Peter O'Donnell, but there's nothing you can do with this thing. I mean, you, it doesn't work. But what do you think of this film? Do you agree with my review? Do you disagree? Let me know in those comments down below. And as usual, if you enjoyed this video, do not forget to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to click that bell icon so you can be notified about future videos just like this one. And while you're by the subscribe button, click that join button to become a Dark Knight fan. All right. Hope you've enjoyed this have our productions night, and I hope you will join me tomorrow for another action movie night. Till then, thanks for watching.